Uh, my name's Henry. Uh, I'm the singer of Boston Manor, and we have a new record coming out in two weeks. I'm not sure when this is coming out, but September 6th. It's called Sundiver, um, and we're very, very excited about it. We've been working on this record for kind of like four years, really, which is crazy to think about. So it's pretty surreal to have it coming out there in the world. But yeah, um, I'm excited to hear what people think of it. Beautiful. Thanks for joining us, mate. And as you say, Boston Manor are set to drop your fifth studio album, Sundiver, on September the 6th. Um, you, you just said you've been writing for four years, mate. So, like, in essence, you've, you've had a longer wait than usual to put the album out because of that, that long time. So how, how do you feel? Like, are you anxious? Are you nervous? Are you keen to get it out of the way? Kind of a mix of all three, to be honest, mate. Uh, it's It's... Yeah, it is weird having sat on a record for so long. I've not done that before, but you you know, usually six months or whatever, you get into the whole rollout thing and yada yada yada. But with this one, uh, we've had the mixes or, or or an early version of the mix done for, for almost a year now. So we've been sitting with it for a minute. And um I'm happy to say that we're we're not bored of it yet. we we really do enjoy listening to this record and um I I am just quite keen to to kind of get it out there. We've just started playing some of the songs from the record live, which is really refreshing and super fun. Um, and and yeah, you know, it, it's obviously part of a double album concept with our previous records. So um, we put a lot into into all that and the kind of concept stuff and the world building. So yeah, I'm, I'm kind of keen to just just let people hear it really. <laughs> so you mentioned the fact that. Um, Sundiver is the accompanying musical piece to 2022's Day Tour. So explain the connection between the albums. Yeah, they were they were always kind of conceived as one project. Um, one follows on from from the other one uh, conceptually. And the tour is this kind of like dark, kind of synthy record that that kind of takes place over one night uh, and ends with kind of the bird song of um, of like daybreak. And the tour start uh, sorry Sundiver starts with the exact same sample. Uh, and kind of goes into this kind of bright, kind of blistering sunshine and, and kind of takes place in the following day, really. So the, it kind of works on a few levels, the concept of it, you know, and, and you can kind of get into it as much or as little as you want to as a listener. We we kind of um, just made it so that you can kind of enjoy them as self-contained albums, um, singles if you want, or you can kind of listen to the whole thing as a as a big double record if if you, you know, you got an hour and a half spare. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, cool. So tell us a bit more about Sundiver from a musical point of view then, mate, what you were going for that side. Yeah, we so going back to that kind of concept thing, we, we were trying to get this kind of sound of like blistering sunshine uh, without it kind of coming across as like happy sounding, if that makes sense, or cheerful or whatnot. Because oh, yeah. uh, we wanted to make an uplifting record, but we still kind of wanted to make a, a gnarly guitar record and, those two things were quite a hard pairing to marry, really. So we spent a, a long time trying to get this guitar sound and and th this sort of like uh, melodic language, really, that we could kind of consistently use that would also make it a, like a cohesive record that felt like one body of work as opposed to a playlist of tunes. Uh, and, and you know, I've got to give credit to the guitarists in our band for doing that, really. But it it um it is a big guitar record. That was kind of one thing that we set out to achieve. We we put a lot of synth work into the tour and it kind of had this kind of shadowy after hours sort of feeling to it. And and we wanted this record to be a bit of a love letter to the guitar. So we even built, a, I say we, I did, I did absolutely nothing <laughs> to help, but um, they built a, a guitar pedal for, for this album uh, specifically. And uh, just to get this kind of sound they were trying to, trying to make. And uh, yeah, so they worked on that for a long time with a, with a wicked, a uh, pedal company called Life is Unfair Audio and it turned out so great that they they actually um have it up for pre-order now if you want to buy one which is pretty cool but it it uh it made it you know it was it was it was a key piece of the puzzle and was on every track pretty much on the record and we use it live now as well that's right that's right now is, is this a conclusion of that storyline is it just a two-part series yeah yeah we're not going to do a third it's it's uh you know two two bookends really so is, is the next one going to be similar lines? Is it going to be conceptual like that, or is it going to be just random songs? Random songs. Uh, I, I don't know, to, to tell you the truth. I mean, I, I it's hard to look that far down the road. You know, we've we put out so many records in such a short space of time now, like with this double album and we did an EP before it. 
and that's all since the pandemic. So we've kind of been in the studio a whole lot for the last like three or four years. So we're, I don't think we're going to kind of put out a record in such quick succession. Uh, we're going to kind of take some time to tour and see see how we feel in, in a year or two. Um, but, you know, with our band, we're kind of always mixing it up and, and trying new things. So I, I imagine it'll be a, a kind of a, a, a another take on it. Uh, I don't know where we'll go with it. Um, and we like being kind of conceptual. You know, we kind of did that on our on our second album, Welcome to the Neighbourhood. And I feel like concert records don't always have to be this kind of dense body of work with like characters and places and stuff and <clears throat> or, and, and you know scenes it can kind of be as loose as a, a, a kind of I don't know just a, a through line that runs through the album you yeah. know so so in that in that sense there's every chance that we could do uh, you know more conceptual stuff um, I think we learn a lot about how to make records feel cohesive and 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 kind of all work together as one piece that that's something that took a long time to get on this record so even if we don't do anything conceptual on the next one I would love to to make I, I think it's a good a important thing to us to make sure that it feels cohesive as, as a, a project yeah uh, you're almost finished your run of Australian dates with trophy eyes at the mm. moment mate. how those shows how have they been going so sick man we oh. love this country so much like yeah. we we genuinely have, I feel so blessed to be able to come and play shows here and uh, these ones have been no exception and it's been really nice to to see that band do such big things in their, their home turf we we toured pretty much all over the world with them at this point um and it's it's really nice to see them in their yeah in their in their home cities doing doing massive gigs and and then yeah we get to return the favor in a, in a few weeks and they're coming playing some shows with us in the uk so that, that's really nice and we, you know they're good friends of us so it's just great to be back on the road with them really yeah and have, have you been playing much of sundive alive while you've been yeah yeah we, we've done a few um little headlines shows in like smaller cities in between the trophy eyes gigs we did one last night we got one tomorrow in geelong and um we've been kind of experimenting with some of the new sundiver tracks on those shows which has been really fun uh because they're like kind of the first times that we've been able to, to to play them and they're in like small rooms and at this point you know the people haven't even heard the record so they don't know these are completely new songs so it's, it's cool to kind of get an unbiased kind of reaction to songs that they've never heard before which we've never had we've never had the opportunity to do that before so that's been really enjoyable very good right, before we let you go mate we started doing a new <laughs> segment called photo bombs here on heavy so just involves me digging through the archives and finding some bands some photos of bands and i'm going to show them to you and you can tell me what's going on okay all right so the first one i've got is this one that's some serious fucking <laughs> hair you've got going on there bro Thanks, man. And it's when I used to wear my really heavy Doc Martens on stage as well. So they, I probably would have gotten a little higher if I had some better footwear on, to be honest. But uh, yeah, judging by the red light in the corner and the red balaclava on the drum kit, that's the Welcome to the Neighbourhood era. So that would have been 2018. And I think that venue is in Bristol. I want to go out on a limb and say Bristol, UK would be my best guess. Right. Look, looking through your photos, bro, like, there's so many action shots of you on stage. Like, you must run around like a motherfucker. Yeah, I need to kind of chill that out a bit, man, because I just get out of breath really easily. I'm getting older as well. So <laughs> I, um, we started, you know, we've always like a very active live band and we started off in like pubs just playing to like five people. So you can't, you didn't have any like lights or, or, um, or, you know, production value. So you just kind of had to get people hyped by jumping around like an idiot. So I guess that's never really left me, to be honest. <laughs> right, yeah, I've got one more photo for you. I just want to know, what the fuck is that on the roof, mate? Like, it looks like an alien being, but no one's actually even looking at it. It's, it's scary as shit. Yeah. Looks like something that? morphing out of the ceiling coming at you. I don't think that's my band, though. Who is that? I got it off your Facebook page. That's no no one on the stage is in my band there. I don't know who that is. <laughs> oh, well, that is. What the fuck do you think that is up there? Yeah. It looks like a reflection, like a weird mirrored ceiling or something. So cool, know. isn't it? Yeah, it's cool. <laughs> Are your band yeah. not as cool as that band then, mate? <laughs> I know, yeah, exactly. 
<laughs> All right, Henry, thanks very much for your time, mate. It's been a pleasure speaking with you. Sundiver is out September 6th. I believe um, the boys have got two shows of their own coming up in Adelaide on August 30th and Melbourne on August 31st. So how, where can people get hold of tickets to them? I guess just Google, man. I'm not, I'm not totally sure with you, but um, I don't know it. I think one of them's still got tickets left. I think, I think Melbourne might be sold out actually, but I think um, Adelaide's still got some tickets left. So um, I'm also going to plug my favorite restaurant in Adelaide, Dumplings Planet. I had it the last time I went there and I've been obsessed with it ever since. So if you're an Adelaide local and you haven't tried that place, you got to check it out. Dumplings Planet. It's, it, I'm going to be there on the, on Saturday or whatever day it is Friday. <laughs> God, that place is going to have to put up the full house site now. Everyone's going to turn up there. I hope so. Yeah, man. Definitely. <laughs> All right, brother. You enjoy the rest of your trip, mate. Best of luck with the album.